Hey, while you in the first five seconds of the video, go ahead, like and subscribe. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. He's going to bring us into slavery again. Because if you know any of the history, we walked out of Egypt when Moses led us uh, through the Red Sea, right? Pretty sure y'all heard about that when Moses split the Red Sea and we walked out. So we walked out of Egypt. Read it again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So this time we came into Egypt, which means slavery, again with ships. So how did we get over here to the coast of America? How did we get over here to the coast of America? This is called spiritual. With ships. So this is being documented, uh, documented in the Bible over 3,000 years ago. That's why he said declaring the end from the beginning. Because he knew that us being a stiff-necked people, rebellious as hell, and don't want to listen to his word, what was going to happen to him. At one point in time, bro, they, the, whole, the whole area of the nation, they kept its laws. They kept its feast days. Now, can you name me one of God's feast days? That's another way of being destroyed. They don't teach that in these churches. What's a feast day? A feast day? You said peace or feast? Feast. Oh, feast. feast day. Thanksgiving? No, nah, that's not what it's the Lord. That's made of man. And they did that to celebrate the time when they, they killed our, uh, the Native that's Americans. Theirs, right. Right. That's theirs. You know what I'm saying? That's why when I first read that we have to come from among them and be separate, I mean, we got to stop choosing their holidays. That's right. right. Because none of those holidays uh, are for us. Um, a lot of them show uh, it's just in memory of what they did to us. That's right. That's, that's why they celebrate their things. So they'll never forget. And they pass it on to their generation, to the next generation. And we've been doing the same thing because we was taught that stuff in slavery. Right. Read. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder. So these curses are going to be upon us for a sign and for a wonder. The sign is to show you that you are the Israelites according to the Bible. That's, That's right. So-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. And the wonder is like, how do we get up out of this thing? How do we get from up under their neck? How do we get from up under their knee? Up under their boot? Read. Upon thy seed forever. So it's going to be on our seeds forever. Our kids. That's how I'm saying that it's only getting worse. Because these curses are going to be uh, continually on our kids until we break the wheel. Until we turn our, turn our, turn, turn, do it 180 That's and right. come back to God. That's right. Hey, sis, you believe in the Bible? Hey, sis, you believe in the Bible? Bro, you believe in the Bible? I don't believe in the Bible. Okay, so you don't believe a higher power wrote this? Because this is says, blessed he that reads. So you have to read for yourself and see if your spirit is going to be, uh, it's going to bear witness with the spirit of the word. Read. It's the book of 2 Peter, chapter 1, verse 20. Bring it out. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. This Bible was written by men that was inspired by God. Give me uh, Isaiah 45, 45 and 9, 46 and 9. I'm going to show you something real quick. Because you said it was written by men like me and you, right? Yeah, it's just hard for me. Like, it's, it's hard for me to just believe. Like, hey, I was like, you see what I'm saying? Like, how do you know that he was actually a man of God that wrote that book? He could be telling you anything. You know what I'm saying? So, like, it's just hard for me to just Hold on, let me show you something real quick. 
Read what you got. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 46 and verse 9. Bring it out. Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning. So God declared the end from the beginning. You think a man could tell you what's going to happen 3,000 years down the road? No, nah, right? No. Now go to Deuteronomy 28, 68. Now I'm going to show you that this was written over 3,000 years ago, right? And then I'm going to show you a curse, right? And then I'm going to show you that all the people in this book are black. Black men, all right? You see this right here? That's the cargo slave ship. I was explaining to my brother right here about the cargo slave ship. This is how they brought us over here from that. Africa, right? Right, so that's how they brought us over here, right? Declaring the end from the beginning. Read. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again, and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women, and no man shall buy you. You know? So we came over here on ships, right? We're going to read this again because it did not say. I'm going to show you what Egypt means too. All right, read that again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Because Egypt is synonymous for a certain word, right? Is that real quick? We're going to show you what Egypt is synonymous for. What do you think it might be synonymous for? Like the actual word? Yeah, it means something. Because a lot of our people like to say, oh, I'm Egyptology, I'm Egypt this, I'm from Egypt. You know what I'm saying? Just because that's a, it was a a, a, a a great city in Africa. All right? Three. This the book. We built them cities. Three. This the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. So Egypt is synonymous for bondage. What's another uh, word for bondage? Slavery. Slavery. Now let's go back to Deuteronomy 28, 68. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. He's going to bring us into slavery again. Because if you know any of the history, we walked out of Egypt when Moses led us uh, through the Red Sea, right? Pretty sure y'all heard about that when Moses split the Red Sea and we walked out. So we walked out of Egypt. Read it again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So this time we came into Egypt, which means slavery, again with ships. So how did we get over here to the coast of America? How did we get over here to the coast of America? This is called spiritual. With ships. So this is being documented, uh, documented in the Bible over 3,000 years ago. That's why he said declaring the end from the beginning. Because he knew that us being a stiff-necked people, rebellious as hell, and don't want to listen to his word, what was going to happen to him. So this is this is where we are today. This is what I was just over here teaching the brother, the curses that we in, because we don't want to hearken to God's law, and statutes, and commandments. You know a little bit about history? Go back to, uh, read 32 again. No, no, hold up. We're going to deal with this ship real quick, though. Read it again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So we can agree that that actually happened, right? That actually happened. So now, this becomes a history book, right? It's a history book. All men wrote history books, right? But this one here was inspired by the Most High God, declaring the end from the beginning. Read. Like that shit, that's Jesus. I can't hurt him. 
You know, that's my brother. I ain't gonna do no harm to my brother. That's how we gotta see each other. But this society has taught us to hate one another. That's why we can't build with build uh, build together. All right, read. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships, by the way whereof I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again. So he's saying that we ain't gonna see our homeland ever again. Because you know, we was taken from the west coast of Africa and then a lot of us was born here. We ain't never been back to our homeland. Declare the end from the beginning. Read. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men, slave men, and bond women. And bond women. Look at this, look at this right here. Right here. Look at this picture right here. These are actual pictures, man. This stuff actually happened to us. You seen them old slave movies? When they got, got the uh, black man up there, seeing how tall he is, looking at his everything, his physique. Oh yeah, he gonna be a good worker. Like they doing in the NFL. There you go. Facts. Same thing, bro. And hey, look at the uh, look at the stadium. Don't they look like the Roman Coliseum? Yeah. Ain't nothing but another form of slavery. Another uh uh Greek Greek man. You know what I'm saying? With uh, the Olympics and all that. The Greek is fashion. Our people chose the way of America over God. That's why we follow man-made rules. Go to church on Sunday. Celebrate Easter. Celebrate uh, Jesus on, on December 25th. That's not in the Bible. Exactly, bro. See, you know some things, bro. You know some things. perfect is God's law, statutes, and commandments. That's right. That's the only thing perfect. Let me show you something, because I, I, I was in the same boat you were. I read the Bible several times, over and over, over and over. But when I read the Bible, since I was taught that Jesus was white, and the people over there in Israel was white, I'm thinking everybody in this was white. So what, how did it really pertain to me? You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Because that's what was happening with me. Read. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 111, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. His praise endureth forever. Now right there, like I said, when I was reading the Bible, I didn't fear God because I didn't think he was really my God. You know what I'm saying? All right, bro, hey, you got our phone number, bro. Give us a call. It's on the back of that flyer. Yes, sir. It's on the back. Our address, our school on there too. All right? Um, I was doing the same thing of reading the Bible, but I, I'm thinking, I'm thinking a white man. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, how can, how can I worship this white man when I didn't see what they did to my people? You know? So it, it was a struggle in me. It was a fight in me. Right. But now when I came and I started reading this book for myself and my spirit bear witness with the spirit and words of this Bible, read. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So I start fearing him, because I used to shave my face. He said, grow your beard out. I grew my beard out. He said, worship him on Saturday. I start worshiping him on Saturday. No buying, no selling, no cooking. These are some of his laws. These are little simple things that he said, do this, and I'm gonna be your God, and you're gonna be my children. But we don't know these things, because we were not taught the Bible the right and correct way. And that's why we come out here. Read. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. So a good understanding. Like I said, when I was young, I ain't had no good understanding. I wasn't keeping this law. So when I read the Bible, I'm thinking of white people. I ain't think it was my people. I ain't think that was me up in here. Right. But now that I keep the law and commandments, the understanding and the knowledge is opened up to me. Now I understand that this is a black man's book. What is nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. 